Hey there, good morning. Welcome to a new installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. My name is Tom Rigsby, your host. 7 Minutes, kind of more like 7-ish. Seven 7-ish seven Minutes in the Morning. It's a show where we talk about how to have help you live a happy, healthy, balanced life while you create. See, even the chicken's got a point of view this morning. While you create the life you love. So, um, good morning as you get here, whether you're watching live or on the replay, if you'll go ahead and drop a, hey, how you doing, some kind of comment, the chicken sounds great, whatever, uh, kind of comment down there to let me know that you're here. That does two things. One, lets me know you're here. It's encouraging. And the other thing is it sets you up so that Facebook will let you know as the conversation develops down in the comments. Good morning, Keith. How are you doing this morning? Good to see you here. So this week we've been talking about uh, work that matters, kind of one of my keystone topics. And we have talked about um, what it is, what it's not. And yesterday we started talking about two of the four uh, components that define work that matters. So yesterday we talked about uh, how work that matters has to be something that you're good at. Um, hang on just a second, move that out of the way. Something that you're good at and something that you love. Not necessarily something you love doing, but something that you love. Something you have an affinity for. And then something that you're good at. If you don't have an affinity for it, if you don't love it, then you're not going to enjoy doing it. And if you're not good at it, you're not going to do a very good job. Which ties into the two elements we want to talk about today. So... Uh, just as, right before we get into that, look, if this is a, the kind of topic that resonates with you or you know somebody that it really resonates with, be sure and tag them in the comments, share this with them so they can listen to it also. All right. So the other two elements of work that matter. So we started out with something that you love and something you're good at. Uh, today we want to talk about something the world needs and something you can be paid for. Now, these two are interesting. I'll tell you what. But first, let's talk about something the world needs first. I tell you all the time, as business owners, entrepreneurs, our job is to solve problems for other people at a profit. Okay? How do you find out the problems that other people have? You ask. Right? So this is the what the world needs part. So many people come up with an idea and put a ton of time and money into developing the idea before they ever talk to anybody about whether they'd really be willing to <coughs> <coughs> excuse me whether they'd be willing to pay them for it or not. And so they sink all of this time and money and effort and resources into building it and nobody wants it. They become discouraged, they quit, they go back to you know working at a job for somebody else. The flip side of that is you find a group of people that you have an affinity for, right? Something you love. Talk to them. Find out what their, their problems and pains are, right? Identify what they need. And then you go solve that problem for them. When you do that, there will be an exchange of value. So this is how they're, all four of these are kind of tying together now, right? This group of people that you have an affinity for, find the, their pains and problems, pick one that you can solve, that's something that you're good at, and if you do that, then there will be this exchange of value. Now, the last one is something that you can be paid for. I was sharing this with some folks yesterday, and got all kinds of comments back on this part, right? Payment doesn't necessarily have to be cash. Think about that for just a minute. There has to be an exchange of value. There doesn't have to be an exchange of cash. And that's where we get stuck very often, right? We're, we're, we're wanting somebody else to validate that what we are doing is good and right in the form of a paycheck. That's, that's the test, right? Is that they'll, they'll pay me for doing this. They'll give me a check for doing this. And we get so conditioned to think of it like a job. Well, it's not a job. It's an exchange of value. Right? Is there something that they can do for you? And you can barter a solution. Right? I mean, 
there's, there's lots of different ways to get paid, right? So don't get hung up on this idea that it has to be a regular recurring paycheck in order for you to get paid. That could not be further from the truth, all right? So now let's look at how all four of these play together. I, I, we started doing this just a minute ago. You find a group that you have an affinity for. It, that's something that you love. You talk to them. You find out what their pains or unmet needs or desires are, and you pick one that you can solve. So now it's something the world needs and something that you're good at. And then finally, you put that together, and if you, if you solve a painful enough problem, Well, let's go with that. If you solve a painful enough problem, then you will get paid. There will be an exchange of value, right? They will appreciate what you're doing for them, and they will, uh, in turn, give you something of equal value to them, right? Remember, value is in the eye of the buyer. So if they think it's worth $0.10, then they'll give you $0.10. If they think it's worth $10, they'll give you $10. Could be the exact same thing. I had this conversation at lunch yesterday. Right? The, the actual object, the work, might be identical. Take a baseball card, for example. Right? To me, I can pick up a baseball card, look at it, and it's a piece of cardboard right, with a picture printed on it. But to the person who's looking for that one piece of cardboard with a picture printed on it to complete you know, the 1967 set of whatever team they're trying to collect, it's incredibly valuable. I know, so here's a great story, right? I had a guy that I used to work with who was um, cleaning out a drawer, and he found this used, all the money was spent off of it, Starbucks gift card. He had won the gift card in a contest, so it was a special printing. There were only six of them ever printed. He had, he had one of the six, but it was spent, right? Or almost spent. He took it to Starbucks. You know, used it to pay for part of his uh, coffee or whatever, and then just told the, the person behind the counter, hey, you can toss it, I don't want it. And that person looked at that card and said, you know, this is pretty unique. Some people collect these. You might want to see if there's a market for this one. So he kept it. He did. Auctioned it on eBay for $10,000. I kid you not, $10,000. because And the guy that bought it had the other five. Just somebody that wanted to spend $10,000 on a, what I would consider a worthless piece of plastic. Right? You never know what somebody's willing to pay for. Don't assume that nobody sees value in what you have or what you do. All right. So some quick good mornings. Good morning, Jeremy. Joe, good morning to you, sir. Good to see you back here this morning. Let's see. Right, wrong arm. See if I can read that comment. Yeah, I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. Yeah, my bride says she hears the chicken, and you can see what we call the chicken. All right, so Joe's got a comment. I put my arm out like that, so it makes it easier for me to read the comments. People are afraid to talk about an idea because they're afraid somebody's going to steal it. I had this conversation yesterday also. Man, all these things are just kind of flowing together for me. The truth is nobody's going to steal your idea. I mean... I'm gonna, th th this could be harsh, so prepare yourself. Put your steel-toed boots on, because this might apply to you. The truth is, you're not executing on your idea. So why would somebody else do it? Now, see, I told you, I warned you up front, that might be harsh, right? But the, the reality is, I, I can take the same idea and share it with 100 people. Maybe one I, I'm, maybe half of them will think, wow, that's a great idea. Maybe one of them will try to execute on it. Statistically, none of them will succeed. None of them will do the work really necessary in order to close out the deal. So sharing your idea with people, not nearly as risky as most people make it out to be. And in that one case where somebody takes your idea and runs with it, Shame on you for not getting it done before they did. You had the idea before they did. Yeah. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So thanks for those comments. Those feedback. I know. I know. Vicky said, ouch. That's, hey, it, I, I'm guilty of it too. 
How many, honestly, have you ever said, honey, honey, look, you see that on TV? That's the thing I was telling you we ought to make a couple of years ago. You remember that? I mean, how many times have you seen somebody else executing on an idea that you had? And here's the thing. Most of the time you look at what they did like, well, that's a piece of crap. That's nothing like what I would have made. Yeah, except they made it. Right? Stop talking about your idea and start making your idea. Well, I might need to talk about that next week. I can't talk about that all week. That'd be, that'd be a hard conversation to have all week. All right. That's it for today. So those are the four elements. Let me hit those again really quickly. Something that you love, something that you're good at, something the world needs, and something you can get paid for. Those are the four things that describe work that matters, right? Because remember, we talked about this earlier in the week. Matters to whom? It matters to me. It's fulfilling for me. And it matters to the people that it creates value for, right? So those are the four things. I'll put those in the notes if you want to go back and read those again. Um, but I would love to hear back from you what you think about these four things and what you think about the topic work that matters in general. Do you have any questions do you think it's something that you can achieve? Is it something that's out of reach for you? Anything, any comment, any feedback on that topic is always appreciated. All right, it's Thursday, thankful Thursday. You can also share what you're thankful for down in the comments. And if you have a question that you would like for me to tackle tomorrow on Free Coaching Friday, drop that down there or send me a message on the Unashamed Nonconformist page or you can just email me directly, tom at tomrigsby.com. I'll take a question tomorrow. Work on that on Free Coaching Friday. All right, that's it for today. You guys have a great uh, a great Thursday. I'll be back. Talk to you again tomorrow. <laughs>